chapter 18, Betrayed by a Kiss. John 18 verse 1, KJV, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered, and his disciples. The brook Cedron, this is in the Kidron Valley between Mount Moriah and the Mount of Olives. A garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. John 18 verses 2 to 6, KJV, and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth, and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward, and fell to the ground. Notice that the word he is in italics which means it is supplied to help give understanding. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward, and fell to the ground. This happened because Jesus used the title that God used when he spoke unto Moses from the burning bush, I am. Exodus 3 verse 14 that is why they fell to the ground. They were standing in the presence of God Almighty and he was displaying that for all ages to see that would read this gospel. John 18 verses 7 to 9, KJV, Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he, if therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake, of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. John 17 verse 12. John 18 verses 10 to 11, KJV, Then Simon Peter having a sword drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Jesus used this opportunity to heal Malchus, the high priest's servant, which had a profound impact upon him, and it probably led to his getting saved. The cup which the father hath given me, shall I not drink it? This is the cup of his suffering and martyrdom. Matthew 20 verses 22 to 23 and 26 colon 42. John 18 verses 12 to 13, KJV, Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus, and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Annas first, for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas. There were two high priests at this time so that one could inspect the Passover lamb for the celebration, while the other could inspect the real lamb of God, Jesus. John 18 verse 14, KJV, Now Caiaphas was he, which gave counsel to the Jews, that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. John 11 verse 50. John 18 verses 15 to 17, KJV, And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple, that disciple was known unto the high priest, John is the person with Peter, but he never mentions his own name. He used his clout to get Peter into the palace. John 18 verse 18, KJV, And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. A fire of coals, these words are used only one other time. Jesus makes a fire of coals and asks Peter three times if he loves him, another reminder of his denial. John 21 verse 9. John 18 verses 19 to 23, KJV, The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world, 
I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, what I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why smitest thou me? Why askest thou me? Under Roman law you did not have to testify against yourself. There had to be witnesses to testify against Jesus to convict him according to Roman law. John 18 verses 24 to 25, KJV, Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it, and said, I am not. Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the priest. Annas is the high priest in verse 19, and here Caiaphas is also called the high priest. John 18 verses 26 to 27, KJV, one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. And immediately the cock crew. The cock had crowed as a reminder to Peter of Jesus' words to him earlier that night. Peter had done what only a few hours ago he thought was impossible. John 18 verse 28, KJV, Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. The hall of judgment, pagan Rome's place to judge people. Lest they should be defiled, these were Jews that had to follow many rules about cleansing prior to celebrating the feasts. They could not go into the judgment hall filled with all the pagan idols, or they would be unclean for the feast. John 18 verses 29 to 30, KJV, Pilate then went out unto them, and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. What accusation bring ye against this man? Notice that they do not answer Pilate's question because they don't have a case against Jesus. They wanted Pilate to give in to mob rule. Pilate was on to them though. John 18 verses 31 to 32, KJV, Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Mark 9 verse 31 KJV For he taught his disciples, and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Take him and judge him according to your law. They wanted the death penalty and they thought they could pressure Pilate into giving it to Jesus. John 18 verses 33 to 35, KJV, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me, what hast thou done? Art thou the king of the Jews? The Jews do not accuse him of being a king until John 19 verse 2. Pilate came up with this on his own. What hast thou done? Pilate now asks his prisoner, what have you done? Why are we holding you? What crime have you done that is worthy of death? The incarcerators are not supposed to be able to incarcerate people if they do not know the reason that they have incarcerated them. Roman law was very clear that a person must stand before his accusers and hear their accusations and be able to defend themselves against them, but none of this is going on here. John 18 verse 36, KJV, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. My kingdom is not of this world. Jesus' kingdom is called the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 3 verses 1 to 2 KJV In those days came John the Baptist, 
preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But now is my kingdom not from hence, it will be of this world in the future, but not until it comes down to earth after the tribulation period. Matthew 6 verse 10 KJV Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. John 18 verses 37 to 38 KJV Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. I should bear witness unto the truth, that he is the Messiah. John 14 verse 6 I am the way, the truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 18 verses 39 to 40, KJV, But ye have a custom, that I should release unto you one at the Passover, will ye therefore that I release unto you the King of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Ye have a custom, Pilate is referring to the custom of the scapegoat, which is based on a scriptural practice of releasing a guilty goat and punishing the innocent goat found in Leviticus 16. Barabbas means the son of Abba, the son of the father. Chapter 19 What is truth? John 19 verses 1 to 3, KJV Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plotted a crown of thorns, and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Therefore, because of the events in chapter 18, scourged, whipped with a cat of nine tails. Psalms 129 verse 3 The plowers plowed upon my back, they made long their furrows. Isaiah 50 verse 6 I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair, I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah 52 verse 14 As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Platted, braided, or twined. A crown of thorns and put it on his head. Genesis 3 verses 17 to 18. Genesis 3 verse 18 Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. A purple robe, Matthew 27 verse 28 says it was scarlet colored and Luke 23 says it was a gorgeous robe. John 19 verses 4 to 5, KJV, Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns, and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man, the crown of thorns, a crown made of thorns to mock the claims that Jesus was the king of the Jews. John 19 verses 6 to 9, KJV, When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Take ye him and crucify him. The Jews were forbidden to crucify anyone. Only the Romans could crucify someone. The Son of God, the chief priests said Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. Whence art thou? Where are you from? John 19 verses 10 to 11, KJV, Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above, therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Thou could have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Now Pilate knows the truth that before him stood not only Israel's Savior, but his very own Creator and Sustainer. Pilate wanted nothing more to do with Jesus. 
Daniel 2 verse 21 KJV. And he changeth the times and the seasons, he removeth kings, and setteth up kings, he giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. He that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin, the chief priests and elders delivered Jesus to Pilate. Matthew 27 verse 1 KJV When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. John 19 verses 12 to 13, KJV, And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend, whosoever mocketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth, and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. From thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, Acts 3 verse 13 KJV, The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. The judgment seat, the bema seat in Greek. The pavement, stone pavement. Gabbatha is the word back in Hebrew. Pilate was in charge of keeping the peace in that region. Anyone claiming to be a king that was not approved by Rome would be seen as an enemy of Rome as well as anyone giving special treatment to them. Pilate could lose his life if Rome were to listen to the religious leaders who were threatening him on that day. John 19 verse 14, KJV, And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. The preparation of the Passover, the day before a Sabbath was always called the preparation day because you could not prepare things on a Sabbath day. The feasts were considered high Sabbaths and did not always fall on a Saturday. The sixth hour, noon. John 19 verses 15 to 17, KJV, But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. We have no king but Caesar. The chief priests spoke for the nation and said their king is Caesar. They didn't want their own king because they would lose their positions as priests under their king. The place of a skull, a rock formation outside of the walls of Jerusalem that looks like a skull, also known as Calvary. Luke 23 verse 33. Golgotha, the skull. John 19 verse 18, KJV, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side one and Jesus in the midst. Isaiah 53 verse 4 Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. John 19 verses 19 to 24, KJV, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, and Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not, the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments, and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also, his coat, now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Cast lots, they gambled for them. Psalms 22 verses 13 to 17 They gaped upon me with their mouths, as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint, my heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels.
My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. John 19 verse 25, KJV, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. His mother's sister, this could be Mary the wife of Cleophas mentioned next, or possibly Mary Solemn. Mary the wife of Cleophas, she is mentioned in Matthew 27 and 28 as the other Mary. She is the mother of James and Hoseas, not James the Lord's half-brother. Cleopa is mentioned in Luke 24 verse 18 as one of the two men that Jesus talked to on the road to Emmaus. Mary Magdalene, out of whom Jesus cast seven devils. Mark 16 verse 9. John 19 verses 26 to 27, KJV, When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Woman, behold thy son, Mary is a type of Israel who needs help in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jesus says to look to John, her new son spiritually speaking, to take care of her in that terrible time coming. Her other sons were not believers yet. She would become a widow of sorts, as her only son, her other sons were not believers yet, was about to die. Like the widow of Nain in Luke 7 verses 11 to 20. Behold thy mother, John was a type of the little flock going through the tribulation period. Jesus was giving John the authority to be her spiritual guide and to look out for her physical well-being. Jude and James later trusted him as their savior and probably resumed caring for their mother. They later wrote the epistles named after them. John 19 verses 28 to 30, KJV, After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. I thirst, Psalm 22 verse 15 KJV, My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Psalm 69 verse 21 KJV, They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. It is finished, he said all that his father wanted him to say and did all of the works his father sent him to do. Gave up the ghost, this means he died. Genesis 25 verse 8 KJV Then Abraham gave up the ghost, and died in a good old age, an old man, and full of years, and was gathered to his people. John 10 verse 18 KJV No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. The death of Jesus. John 10 verses 17 to 18 Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. John 19 verses 31 to 35, KJV, The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation, that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers, and brake the legs of the first, and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. The preparation, at the beginning of the sixth day, 
our Thursday evening, the people rush to buy the supplies they will need for the seventh day, Saturday, which begins for them on our Friday evening. Sun Mon Tuesday Wed Thursday Friday Saturday. Day 1 Day 2 Day 3 Day 4 Day 5 Day 6 Day 7. At sunset on Friday the Sabbath begins. Thursday is called the preparation day even unto this day. They cannot buy anything the next day because everything closes early on Friday, the sixth day, so that the people will make it home before the Sabbath starts. That Sabbath was an high day. The reason why we have the additional day in there is because this was a feast day here and an additional Sabbath is added to the week during this particular feasts. The preparation day would also be one day earlier than usual thus making time for three days and three nights to elapse as Jesus had said it would that he would be in the heart of the earth. Their travel is restricted to six tenths of a mile. The thieves would have to be brought down from their crosses well before the Sabbath day and be buried. So, time for them was of a necessity to allow them enough time to finish their work, shop, get home and prepare for the Sabbath. Their legs might be broken, when there was a crucifixion on a Thursday, they would beg Pilate to allow the soldiers to break the legs of those who had been crucified to speed up their death. They break not his legs, Jesus' legs were never broken, just as King David prophesied a thousand years earlier. John 19 verses 36 to 37, KJV, For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. Zechariah 12 verse 10 KJV And I will pour upon the house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Psalm 34 verse 20 He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. John 19 verses 38 to 40, KJV And after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus, and wounded in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man. Matthew 27 verse 57. An honorable counselor. Mark 15 verse 43. Nicodemus. John 3. A mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pound weight, no one who was marred more than any man, crucified, wrapped in one hundred pounds of ointment, deprived of food, water, and oxygen for three days could just get up on his own power. But over a billion people today believe that Jesus just fainted on the cross, and he awoke three days later. John 19 verses 41 to 42, KJV, Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. A new sepulcher wherein was never man yet laid, Jesus made his grave with the rich. Isaiah 53 verse 9 KJV and he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. The Jews' preparation day, because it was late on the preparation day Jesus' body had to be buried near the place of his crucifixion. Joseph and Nicodemus could not have done it the next morning because their superiors would not have allowed them the time off from their duties as a counselor, Joseph, and a ruler of the Jews, Nicodemus, to bury a troublemaking rabbi. Secondly, for obvious hygienic reasons. It would be a very unsanitary thing to leave him unburied until the next day, even if he were wrapped in scented clothes. Lastly, because they would upset the Jews by burying Jesus while they were preparing for the Sabbath day. But all things were done in accordance with God's plans so that even in Jesus' death, he perfectly fulfilled the prophecies concerning him.
Another interesting thing to note is that when Jesus was brought into this world, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes, the very same thing they used to wrap Jesus in for his burial. This, I believe, signified that Jesus was born to die. The enemies of Jesus remembered Jesus' words about his rising from the dead, but none of his disciples did. Luke 18 verses 31 to 34. The reason being is that Jesus didn't want them to know yet because they probably would have left him prematurely, so Jesus withheld that information from them. Why he wanted his enemies to remember what he was saying is clear. He knew they would do everything possible to prevent his teachings from spreading by placing guards at the tomb to prevent his disciples from stealing his body. They unwittingly helped to make it next to impossible for Christianity to grow barring a miracle, which is exactly what happened. Jesus was glorified, and then he had Pilate's own guards as first-hand witnesses to the resurrection. Chapter 20 Resurrection Sunday John 20 verses 1 to 2, KJV, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. The first day of the week, Sunday begins a Jewish week. Cometh Mary Magdalene early, Proverbs 8 verse 7 I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Mark 16 verse 9 The sepulchre, the tomb of Jesus. The other disciple, this is John, the writer of this gospel. There is no mention of any angels, or the two appearances of Jesus to them because these were still yet to happen. The women would return and see these things after Peter and John had left the tomb. John 20 verses 3 to 8, KJV, Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin, that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw, and believed. The napkin, the cloth that was wrapped around Jesus' head. He saw and believed, he believed Mary's report that they had taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. Scripture points out that it wasn't until later that day that the disciples believed he was risen until after seeing him for themselves. John 20 verses 9 to 10, KJV, For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Notice that the disciples were not excited, but were rather much perplexed and went back to their home in Luke 24 verse 4. This was not the response we would expect from two people who had just found out that their Savior had risen from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 21 to 23 KJV For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. John 20 verses 11 to 12, KJV, But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down, and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Two angels in white, they had on white garments, but nothing is said about their garments shining like at other times in the other Gospels. This is why Mary doesn't respond to them as the keeper did in Matthew 28 verse 4 when they began to shake and became as dead men in their presence. She was entertaining angels unaware. Another reason that the angels were there was to proclaim Jesus' glorious resurrection from the dead. Jesus becomes the first fruits of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 19 to 23. Imagine what the women might have thought had the angels not been there after they arrived at the tomb the second time that Sunday morning. 
they would have doubted his resurrection themselves had it not been for these heavenly messengers who were sent from God to strengthen their faith. When they heard the angels remind them of Jesus' sayings while he was in Galilee, they were fully convinced of his resurrection. Sitting, only two times do we ever see angels sitting as opposed to standing. Jesus is also seen sitting on a cloud and not standing in Revelation 14 verse 14 And I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. The one at the head, and the other at the feet, just like the two cherubims on the mercy seat with the Ark of the Covenant, one at one end, and the other at the other end, facing one another. Exodus 25 verses 18 to 22 KJV And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another, toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. John 20 verse 13, KJV, And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Woman, why weepest thou? Mary doesn't recognize these two as angels. John, the writer of this gospel, does later on. See also the story of the widow of Nain in Luke 7 verses 11 to 20. Mary does not become fearful of them and fall as dead as the keepers of the garden did when in the presence of an angel. These are the only words that John records. Other words were spoken and recorded in the other gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Jesus' last 40 days. John 20 verses 14 to 16, KJV, And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him, hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Luke 7 verses 11 to 20 KJV. And it came to pass the day after, that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John shewed him of all these things. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? John 20 verse 17, KJV, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Here we have Jesus' second appearance to Mary Magdalene in just a matter of a few minutes from when he appeared unto her back at the tomb. The reason that she could not touch Jesus was that Jesus had to ascend into heaven and pour his sinless blood on God's mercy seat to obtain our complete forgiveness of sins. 
To touch any sinner would have made Jesus unclean by the virtue of their sin and thus render himself unable to present his sinless blood to the Father. The priest had for centuries practiced this very thing on a yearly basis to atone for the sins of the nation of Israel. Now Jesus was doing it once and for all for the entire world to obtain our eternal redemption. No more would the blood of goats, bulls, and lambs have to be shed for sinful mankind. When Jesus met the ladies the second time immediately following his ascension and dissension from heaven, he commanded the ladies to worship him while they were on their way back to tell the disciples the good news. If you think about it all that was needed by the religious and political leaders of that day to silence Christianity forever was to produce the body of Jesus three days after his crucifixion. They couldn't. So, they were forced to make up a story that no sincere person would have believed if they would have just taken a moment to think it through. Ask yourself, would the disciples all be willing to live the life of outcasts all to maintain a story they knew was untrue? Of course not. Would they be willing to be tortured and killed for something they knew was a lie? No. Would they risk eternal torment in hell for preaching a way of salvation that they knew themselves was false? Absolutely not. John 20 verse 18, KJV, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. All eleven were present, and none of them believed as of yet, not even Peter and John who had already been to the tomb earlier that morning. John 20 verses 19 to 20, KJV, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus, and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. The first day of the week, Sunday. For fear of the Jews, the disciples were in hiding in the city because they were afraid the religious Jews would come after them next. Peace be unto you, this was directed towards the men that had betrayed him a few days earlier. He had forgiven them. He showed unto them his hands and his side, this was to prove to them that it was really him. Luke 24 verse 39 KJV Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. One week later, John 20 verses 21 to 22, KJV, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Peace be unto you, this relates to the next verse where he again sends these disciples to do what he originally intended them to do. They had forsaken their positions as apostles and had fled in fear, now they are reinstated as sent ones. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you, an apostle is a sent one. God sent Jesus to minister to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Romans 15 verse 8 Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. He breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. The word breathed only appears three other times in Scripture. The first time was in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 2 verse 7 And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Was there any evidence that they received the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, at that moment? No. They did, however, and he would manifest himself to them on the day of Pentecost. There was visible and audible evidence ten days later that they were filled with the Holy Spirit when the day of Pentecost was fully come. John 7, 36-39, 14, 16-26, 15, 26-27, and 16, 7-14. This is the same thing as what happened in Ezekiel. Ezekiel prophesied the dead bones to live again, but they haven't yet. Here it was a 10-day delay. The Holy Ghost, as you can see, comes into those bodies and they live again at the onset of the kingdom. Here we see a 2,500-year delay, but it will happen just as Pentecost did. 
Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 14 KJV. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and, lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So, I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So, I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, we are cut off for our parts. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I the Lord have. Spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. See also Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, as he explains the coming of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 verses 14 to 33 KJV. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood, and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved, therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad, moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. 
Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. The Holy Ghost, as you will see in the book of Acts, will come upon the disciples as needed, when prayed for, to give them boldness to witness of the works and resurrection of Christ. It was nothing like our receiving the Holy Ghost today. We received the Holy Ghost at the moment we were saved today. We are baptized by the Holy Ghost and placed into the body of Christ. Back then they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, there is a very real difference between the two. Compare Matthew 3 verse 11 with 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. Matthew 3 verse 11 KJV I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 KJV For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. In a related story God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones of the house of Israel that they may come alive. Read what will happen to the nation of Israel and compare it with what happened to Jesus. Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 14. John 20 verse 23, KJV, Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. This is speaking about the keys of the kingdom and binding and loosing. Matthew 16 verse 19. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. The word remit in this instance means to lose their hold on someone. Matthew 16 verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. The word retain in this instance means to keep or to bind. Peter and the other apostles had this power, the keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16 verses 15 to 16 KJV. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mark 2 verse 7 KJV. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Luke 5 verse 21 KJV And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? This power was given to the twelve only. John 20 verses 24 to 25 KJV But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and press my hand into his side, I will not believe. Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, Didymus means a twin. A twin is someone, a brother, that looks like someone else. Thomas and all the apostles saw the Lord perform many miracles. The tribulation saints will not have that luxury. We have seen the Lord, they will have to believe solely by the word of others, because Jesus will not appear to anyone during those days to perform miracles to increase their faith. Compare Jesus and Thomas's words in John 11 verses 11 to 16. John 11 verses 11 to 16 KJV. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Thomas didn't get enough faith back in John 11 which caused him to doubt. 
Jesus was sent by his father to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and so he now sends his disciples to complete what he started amongst them. Verse 23 means exactly what it says, Jesus gave unto these ten apostles kingdom authority over the nation of Israel to bind and loose, or to remit or retain sins. This was not passed down to anyone after them. Paul could not do it for the body of Christ, and neither can anyone today. This is not a gift for the church today, it was for the nation of Israel. Remember the apostles will sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. We have seen the Lord, Thomas did not believe the words of the other apostles at that time. Eight days later, John 20 verses 26 to 27, KJV, and after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Peace be unto you, this is the third time Jesus said this since his resurrection. This time Jesus appeared in a room with its doors shut. This was also another sign that he showed to his disciples that he was indeed alive, that Luke calls one of the many infallible proofs. Acts 1 verse 3 KJV, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. These comments were in response to Thomas's earlier statement. John 20 verse 25 Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. That should remind you of some believers during the end times that look at his nail-scarred hands. Zechariah 12 verse 10 KJV And I will pour upon the house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Zechariah 13 verses 6 to 9 KJV And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Be not faithless, only believing, faith cometh by hearing. Thomas was without a believing faith until after he had seen the risen Christ. We are saved by grace alone, through faith, totally without sight. John 20 verses 28 to 29, KJV, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. My Lord and my God, Jesus is God in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3 verse 16 KJV And without controversy great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. 1 John 5 verse 7 KJV, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Doubting Thomas doubted no more. Jesus receives worship from Thomas, and he does not rebuke him for it, because he was correct to do so. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed, Romans 10 verse 17 KJV, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. John 20 verse 30, KJV, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. 
Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. The signs were for those who he was sending out to preach the gospel of the kingdom to their fellow countrymen. These signs are the infallible proofs mentioned in Acts 1 verse 3. This book, the book John is mentioning here is the gospel of John, not the Bible. John 20 verse 31, KJV, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that was the requirement for a person to believe to have eternal life in those days when the kingdom was at hand. Matthew 16 verse 16 KJV And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, that believing ye might have life through his name, not through trusting in his death, burial, and resurrection. John 8 verses 21 to 24 KJV Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins, whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Today we have to believe that Jesus died for us, was buried, and that he rose again from the dead for our justification so that we may enter into heaven itself. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 KJV Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The last verse of this chapter seems like a great way to end John's gospel, and some think it is the correct place to end his gospel. They are wrong, because the vital last chapter links us to the book of Acts, and to the ministry of the Holy Spirit with the twelve apostles. Chapter 21 Come and Dine John 21 verses 1 to 2, KJV, After these things Jesus shoot himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise shoot he himself. There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. The Sea of Tiberias, this is the same place known as the Sea of Galilee, and Lake Genesaret. Why are they in Tiberias, which is in the north, in the Galilee region when they were told to tarry in Jerusalem to be endued with power from on high? They were told that they were to go to Galilee and there they would meet with Jesus as well. Matthew 28 verses 16 to 17 KJV Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Mark 16 verse 7 KJV, But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him, as he said unto you. Simon Peter, Simon is not originally called Peter by his parents. It is a name given to him by Jesus to distinguish him from the others. Thomas called Didymus, Didymus means a twin or a double. You will see that Thomas serves as a type of something when the word Didymus is used concerning him. Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, Nathaniel is first mentioned to us in John 1 verses 45 to 49. He is the Israelite indeed in whom is no guile, a type of tribulation saint. His name is not mentioned anywhere else until we get to this last chapter. He was also called Bartholomew, but not in John the sons of Zebedee, James and John, Mark 3 verse 13 KJV. And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. Notice that they are always mentioned immediately after Peter, but not here. And two other disciples, John never mentions his name in the book of John to avoid confusing readers. He is referred to as the disciple that Jesus loved. 
Seven apostles are mentioned here and four are not. All 11 were told to meet Jesus in Galilee on a mountain that he appointed them. Matthew 28 verse 16 KJV Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. The other four were on the way. The seven were there early probably because it was the area they were from. John 21 verse 3 KJV Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. I go a-fishing, Peter and the six other apostles go a-fishing, and they toil all night and catch nothing. Remember, they are supposed to be fishers of men now. Luke 5 verse 10 KJV And so is also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And that night they caught nothing, they wanted to do something on their own while they were waiting, and it started out being very unfruitful. John 21 verse 4, KJV, But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Children, he calls these men, children. He calls God his Father. He often calls believers the children of God. Matthew 5 verse 9. The term children relates to the lambs in verse 15 below. Have ye any meat? What have you caught without me? Nothing. Men were referred to as fish that they would catch. Meat, according to Jesus, is doing the will of the Father spiritually speaking. John 1 verse 34. John 21 verses 6 to 7, KJV, And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. Cast the net on the right side of the ship. See the parable of the kingdom of heaven that this event foreshadowed in Matthew 13 verse 47 below. That disciple whom Jesus loved, this is the apostle John, the writer of the book of John. Matthew 13 verses 47 to 50 again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore, and sat down, and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth, and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Was it Jesus that withheld the fish until this time? Absolutely. Without Christ, they could do nothing. Jesus was teaching his disciples that with his help, even though he was not in the boat with them physically, they will be able to do what he has commissioned them to do. God subsidizes whatever he authorizes. John 21 verses 8 to 9, KJV, And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. A fire of coals. Peter was warming himself at a fire of coals when he denied Jesus a third time. This is the only two times the phrase a coal of fire is mentioned in the scripture. John 18 verse 18. John 21 verses 10 to 11. KJV, Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many yet was not the net broken. Full of great fishes, could Israel eat every kind of fish? No, only clean fish. Leviticus 9 verses 11 to 12 KJV And the flesh and the hide he burnt with fire without the camp. And he slew the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled round about upon the altar. An hundred and fifty and three, why that number, and why were they counted? 
If the fish represent men in the latter times, and they do, then it could be that they represent people from 153 different nations in the last days, some bad that are destroyed while the good getting to enter the kingdom. Yet was not the net broken, the first time, the net broke. Luke 5 verses 4 to 6 KJV Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. John 21 verses 12 to 14, KJV, Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus shewed himself to his disciples, after that he was risen from the dead. This is now the third time that Jesus shewed himself to his disciples. You will see numerous threes in these verses as a reminder to Peter of his denial of knowing Christ. John 21 verse 15, KJV, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Simon, son of Jonas, this title is used three times only by Jesus here in this chapter to remind Simon of his betrayal. Luke 22 verses 26 to 34. Simon was his birth name. Simon, son of Jonas, his father, was how you identified one Simon from another. If there were more Simons with fathers of the same name, then they would be called by their name and the name of the town they were from. For example, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus surnamed Simon with the name of Peter, a stone. Jesus uses Simon here because he is to humble him in his own mind. Mark 3 verse 16 KJV And Simon he surnamed Peter. Remember Peter's boasting when he was in the upper room? He called him out and called him Simon, Simon. Luke 22 verses 26 to 34 KJV But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison, and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Lovest thou me more than these? When Jesus mentions the lambs, he adds the three additional words more than these to his question to Simon. Feed my lambs, lambs are little sheep. Sacrifices were to be lambs of the first year. Genesis 22 verse 8 KJV and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So, they went both of them together. Exodus 12 verses 3 to 5 KJV, speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep, or from the goats. Jesus was called the Lamb of God because their sacrifice was supposed to a lamb of the first year as in the Passover lamb. It was not called a Passover sheep. John 21 verses 16 to 17, KJV, He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, 
thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep, sheep are older lambs. While they all sat around the fire eating fish, Jesus asked Peter if he loved him more than these. People have debated what these were, but I think it is clear by the context that Jesus was talking about the fish and Peter's family fishing business. Why did Jesus ask Peter three times if he loved him? I believe it was because Peter denied him three times. Jesus wanted Peter to say three times I love you more than the security that a life as a fisherman would provide. It is also interesting to note that the two different Greek words are used interchangeably for the word love in these verses which have a different meaning. Lovest thou me? Twice Jesus asks Peter if he, agape, loved him more than these, and Peter would always respond with Lord you know that I filio love you. The third time Jesus asks Peter if he loves him, filio, and he responds the same way, you know I, filio, love you. A response no doubt brought on by his sorrow for denying that he ever knew Jesus, surely a deep abiding love would not deny his Savior. The final time when Jesus changed words to the one Peter was using, that must have hit him where it hurt, Peter do you, filio, love me? Peter's response was the same, you know Lord, I filio love you. I have a brotherly kind of love. Peter was done with his boasting from then on. This is where Peter was converted according to Luke 22, 2 Peter 1 verses 12 to 16, Luke 22 verse 32, But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Peter's death and martyrdom. John 21 verses 18 to 19, KJV, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Peter would be crucified and carried to the place of his death. In his death he would glorify God, he would not die betraying him. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God, Peter would eventually lay down his life for Christ in the end, and that is a gape love. Follow me, you denied me and fled, but now you are forgiven so follow me. John 21 verses 20 to 23, KJV, Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die, yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die. But, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Then Peter turned and seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, what was John doing that Jesus wanted Peter to start doing again? He was following. Verse 20 above. Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? This was the previous event from the night of his betrayal in the upper room. What shall this man do? After hearing of his fate, Peter asks about John's fate. John was not the issue here, Peter was, so Jesus turns the focus back to Peter. If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? John put this in his gospel to clear up the misunderstanding that originated from Peter's question. Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. John plainly says, Jesus didn't say I would live until the kingdom is established and go into it without dying. John 21 verses 24 to 25, KJV, this is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, 
the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. John says that he barely covered in 21 chapters a small fraction of what he saw for those three and a half years. Amen. The word amen is used at the end of a prayer or a sentence, never at the beginning. It is used as the last word of all four Gospels as well. The word is the same Greek word translated verily in the King James Bible, and it is always used at the beginning of a statement and never at the end of one. The end.